Welcome back to the Artie Lang Show. Well, baseball isn't the only uh, sport with a bunch of nutty situations going on. Football has its share, as always. And here to discuss that is a friend of the show, retired NFL linebacker, LeVar Arrington. LeVar, what's up, man? You know what, Artie? I'm just happy I could be a part of your show, finally. <laughs> I know, LeVar. Listen, I called it LeVar Show uh, a few months ago, and we had a good time. I pre- you, You've always been very supportive of me, LeVar, and I appreciate Absolutely. that. I do. I really do. Well, that's the only reason why I'm up at 1130. There's, there's nobody else that I would be <laughs> on the phone with doing an interview with at 1130. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. Well, uh, hopefully you're a little uh, tired and you say something funny here. It'd be crazy. <laughs> uh, well, there you go. Artie Lang. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, well, let's get right into it. Uh, Riley Cooper, what, sure. uh, what, what's your feelings on this? Do you think that this obviously it's not a surprise, right? And it's, uh, uh, but, but how, uh, how uh, common is that in in football uh, for uh, a white guy maybe to, I don't know, uh, exhibit racist behavior like that? I don't know. You're white. I'm black. You tell me. You give me the answer. <laughs> well, if I was in the NFL, I think, uh, and I uh, like to use the N-word, I think I'd keep it to myself. <laughs> <laughs> you know, interesting thing about the, the whole story, Artie, is you would assume someone who spends uh, as much time around different different racial backgrounds of people right. in the locker room. Right, right. That, that they wouldn't have such hateful feelings. So exactly. I found it to be a little little strange. But, you know, everybody has their, their own lives outside of, of, I guess, locker rooms and different things like that. So whatever your personal beliefs and personal interests are, obviously um, his, his seemed to be kind of uh, on par for someone that, I guess, doesn't care for black people. Well, I don't know if you heard this, but Donovan McNabb, uh, when he retired, mentioned my co-host, John Ritchie, in his farewell speech as a guy that uh, he was happy to have blocking for him. <laughs> and John told me yeah. off the air that he would have been more excited if it came from a white quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> very kidding. I'm very kidding you know what, on that. John, I, I get it. I, you know, to be honest with you, uh, you know, you've been on our show quite a bit. We're we're pretty liberated, me and Dukes are. So mm. um, there's, there's a really, you know, I, I'll say strong racial tension right now in, in, in the United States as a whole. But, mm. uh, you know, as a sports, as a sports person, uh, I tend to try to stay away from getting into those issues and being too serious about them because, you know, at the end of the day, Artie, what is Riley Cooper doing to keep me from my dreams exactly. and, and my success? In it's life, it's so. just a little disappointing, though. You know what it, I mean? It, it, you're right. It's kind of like yeah. it's it's like, oh, really? Come on, man. You know, yeah. Yeah, but that's kind of that's kind of how I take it. It's kind of it's kind of childish. It's not kind of childish. It's, it's childish and it's immature and, and it's. You know, for him, it, it, his childish ways and his immature way at that moment uh, has costed him. And how much, we're, we're not sure. But for now, it's costed him uh, time at, at training camp with, with his team. So yeah. it's more about him costing himself than really costing anybody else. Him shooting that word out, uh, what, what good did it do? You know, what impact did it have? The only person that impacted was him. Right. And, and right. so, it's, it's, you know, people need to use the, the other side of their brain a little bit more sometimes, man, and, and they could get better results. Take two minutes to think. Take two extra seconds to think. Like, that word hit your brain. You know, it had to leave your brain uh, and, and go all the way down to the process of what it does before it comes out of your mouth. Somewhere along that, that path, Artie, do something to think about why you shouldn't. <laughs> right. What a reason exactly. why you shouldn't let those words come out. You know, that type of word come yeah. out of your mouth. Right. Well, listen, I, unfortunately, it's the most interesting thing that's happened at a Kenny Chesney concert. Right? <laughs> yeah, right. That's what he said, a Kenny Chesney concert. Kenny Chesney, Kenny Chesney yeah. was reported to say, you know, he was very disappointed in, in uh, Riley Cooper's action. I'm that, sure. Uh, that was I'm sure he was. Yeah. Uh, 
Well, uh, what, what do you think about what do you think about the game in general, man? Uh, as far as you know, uh, people are talking about this uh, this hit clown he made uh, last year, and um, you know the different rules now with putting your helmet into somebody. And yep. and are we going to be playing two hand touch in twenty years or what? What do you think is going to happen? No, I, I don't. I don't believe so. I, I think that the game will still remain strong. I think it'll remain. Uh, very, very competitive. I just think that right now, uh, because there there aren't enough LeVar Arringtons out here uh, teaching teaching fundamentals. You like that third person reference? Uh, very yes. nice. Very nice. Thanks. Thanks. You like Ricky uh, Henderson? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, he's he's a Penn Stater too. You know, uh, <laughs> you know anyways, uh, you know, I, I just think that they have to kind of put parameters around the game a little bit more, just to to kind of regulate and govern it a little bit tighter right now because guys need to, to learn fundamentals more. They've they got to go about uh, handling their business on the football field much better. And that goes for coaches as well as players. Hey, uh, LeVar, I, this is John. I was up, not – how's it going, man? Uh, I was not a big star in college like okay. – Someone I know who I'm talking to on the phone. Thank you. Yeah. You, are, uh, you guys are both stars. No, no, man. But Well, you were everywhere when you were at oh, Penn State. That. And I wonder how familiar this Johnny Manziel situation where people are saying he took money uh, down at the BCS championship to sign some autographs. How familiar is that skulking behind the scenes in your experience, did you have people asking you to sign things, you know, for for ten ten figure uh, payoffs? No, because I was an a hole, bro. Like, <laughs> I was a bona fide bad guy back then. Uh, you know, I was a good dude, and and I was a kind hearted guy. But my persona on the field was was bad ass, mm -hmm. and and so. You know, I think a lot of people found it very difficult to to approach me. You know, I have a mean look to me. Uh, I'm I'm tall. I'm I'm very dark. You know, I think that it's it has uh, uh, an intimidating impact on people. And then I, I do believe when I open my mouth, it, it's kind of one of those things where you're like, all right, he's not only big, black, and strong and fast and can lead people in a single bound. He he actually knows how to think. So. Mm -hmm. I, I never really came across anybody trying to get me to do um, inappropriate things. Did you have any of your teammates that, that were um, getting well, that yeah, sort I, of you, perk? You definitely could see some of, of the guys, um, um, possibly, I'll say. I never confirmed yeah. uh, because it just wasn't my business to, to confirm it. But you could see that some of the guys may have been benefiting from being pretty good at playing the game of football. Yeah. Well, I definitely saw some of that, maybe more in Michigan than at Stanford. Stanford, there was, we had six people at our game. No one cared about football there. <laughs> well, no one's really? gonna say. There's a few more yeah. now. Yeah, now they're now now, now they're number four. I didn't know that. Coming into the season, Stanford only had. Uh, I thought there was a bigger. Uh, football. No, what's there, their sport? Basketball. There really or wasn't. Or what, what is it? Well, baseball more. Uh, they, they're. There are all the other sports uh, well, except they play, football. They play some volleyball. They, they, they <laughs> swimming. They're huge. You know, Tiger Woods. Uh, the swimming. The yeah, golf. Yeah, Tiger Woods. Yeah. yeah. What, is, is that what you want? I said Stanford. Right? I think. Yeah. I, yeah. Tiger did. Tiger yeah. was there when I was there. Oh, okay. Uh, but uh, so we didn't have those opportunities for sure. I didn't, at least. But uh, I get it. what do you? I, I mean, they seem to not be able to prove that he took money, uh, so he might end up playing this year anyway. Uh, yep. But I just uh, wanted to check your take on that sort of well, thing. Well, you know, to be honest with you, if you're asking my take on, on Manziel on, on this situation, I hope that it isn't true. Uh, whether, you know, everybody's saying, well, why would he do it? He, he comes from uh, a well-off family. There's no reason for him to do it. I, you know, whether you're well-off or not, Mm -hmm. I think that you should always, you know, take your, your brand, which is yourself, uh, and take your team into consideration before you make some of the decisions that you make. I ultimately feel like, yeah. you know, just like with the Riley Cooper situation, uh, if you're an ultimate teammate and, and you want to win, um, 
you guys have, have everything on the right track. You're the only team that beat Alabama a season ago. Right. You, you had things going the right way. Why would you jeopardize things um, through being selfish? And, and so although I'm, I, it's not confirmed, and, and I hope it, it isn't true, I just, I just really hope that Manziel isn't, uh, you know, on one of those the rapid descents and, and, and ending up crashing and burning because it, do, it just doesn't seem like it's stopping. And I don't know. If it, I, no, it doesn't. Yeah, well, can yeah, you speak to that? I mean, I, I, I feel like I feel like it's really hard when you're a guy who's good at football to just shrug off all the smoke that's being blown all over you uh, when everyone thinks that you're good and that you're worth more than you truly are, and when you're impressionable and young. I mean, he was a freshman last year, won the Heisman. He's got the nation telling him he's the best player in the country. I mean, that's it's very obvious now that he he has let this go to his head to Where a certain degree. Where do you go but down? And he's making terrible decisions. <laughs> that's right, exactly. Yeah. Right on. It's I like, mean, you know, the crazy thing about it is we think that he's going down, but a lot of people said this is how he's always been. We uh-huh. just didn't know him. You know, I, I think right. that once he burst onto the scene, uh, we now know who Johnny Football is, and then he wins the the Heisman. Uh, I think that I think that for what it's worth, whether he was a, a douchebag before mm-hmm. he became uh, famous or not, you, you gotta you gotta fix that. You you gotta take a look at you know a lot of people saying well football needs him more than he needs or he needs it. And I think that's incorrect. Yeah, me too. I don't too. think that there's anybody that's bigger than the game so much so where no. the game needs it's a big more game. than, than yeah. the person needs it. So I, I think that he just needs to have some way somehow he needs to have a reality check because at, at some point uh, it's going to be a bad, bad ending to this story. I, I think Maurice Claret continues to come to mind mm-hmm. when I think about Johnny Manziel. And, and, you know, will he have the same end as, as Maurice Claret? I don't know, but he's a short guy. He's already an undersized quarterback. And right. everybody says, well, Russell, Russell Wilson has, has made it for him, and, and guys like Robert Griffin III have made it. Uh, easier for a guy like Manziel to transition into the league, but I don't think that that's necessarily true. Uh, and and not to mention that if a, if a franchise is going to take a chance on a guy, that that's a risk a risk uh, factor involved with his athletic you know athletic ability. Um, and well, not athletic ability, but his physical attributes, I should say. Uh, you don't want to make it any harder on on a franchise to draft you. And I think a lot of things going on right now. It could really be in the future derailing his opportunity to have a fair chance in the league. Yeah, I agree. Hey, uh, LeVar, uh, I have to ask this. Uh, what was your relationship like with Jerry Sandusky when you were at Penn State? You know, the crazy thing about Jerry Sandusky was that was my guy already. Right. Like, I mean, I, I played for him. I, I went to Penn State largely in part of the linebacking tradition at, at Penn State. He Huge. was a professor of, of linebacker you. Yeah. And and I wanted to they, they I went to school as a as a safety and as a tailback. And I told them when I committed to the school I did not want to play safety and I did not want to play tailback. They forced me to play safety and I ran into the line of scrimmage uh every single play until they moved me to the linebacker. <laughs> That's a true story. Um I was with Jerry for for a lot of time, and, and, and Jerry, you know, the crazy thing about it is when they tell you you really don't know uh, a predator, uh, it's it's the truth. Uh, I You know, I grew up in a house where my my father's an ordained minister and, and gave his, his life to helping others. My mother is a, was a special ed educator who gave her life to helping others. I went to a school where Second Mile was, was a major uh, a major charity, and, and it seems as though Jerry Sandusky gave his life to help others. So when that news broke, that that's what it was, and not to mention, uh, I knew one of the victims. I knew for certain one of the victims that, that was involved. Uh, it, it really broke my heart. It, it broke my heart, and um, it further, you know, as we live life, you guys will both uh, attest to this, uh, life changes your viewpoint of of how you how you view it, and, sure. and that was one of those moments where uh, it was a sobering moment that you could be so close to such a a, a, a horrible person and and not even know it, and and so and I learned from him and I was influenced by him and. Um, 
All I can say is for me, uh, and I'm sure I speak for the rest of my teammates and the rest of the guys that were in the room uh, with him as a coach, is is that it's like having a family member that, that does something wrong. Uh, it does not define every single person that, that was there. And, and I think that that's just been, you know, my continuous message is, you know, we're, we're good people. And, and the fact that there was a sick guy amongst us and he happened to be a very prominent figure is, is just, it's very unfortunate whether he was prominent or not. But it, it's just an unfortunate situation for those victims. It's an unfortunate situation for the people that were involved in it that had nothing to do with it. That man let a lot of people down, and more importantly, he let those children down that were looking for a safe haven and looking for guidance and, and direction, much like we were, and, and they were being taken advantage of in the way that they were. So it was very mm -hmm. disappointing. Uh, LeVar, well, that's about as eloquent as you can put it. I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, we got to roll, but before we do, I want to give you a chance to mention your charity. Go ahead, man. Yeah, you know what? My, my foundation is Extreme Prevention, and, and we ultimately uh, we, we, we raise money, and we, we also have a for-profit uh, company that we, we basically we sell uh, products for, for guys that are, are teaching and training their kids to play football. Uh, they can go on ExtremePrecision.com. That's extreme with an X, no E, and precision with an O. So if you do things, you know, precise, you can be uh, an extreme pro at what it is that you do. And it's pretty cool. you got to check out the site. Uh, what it is is we, we body map uh, shields and shirts. So don't just tell somebody, go block them, go hit them, or, or you know, take the hand off. We actually body map, we place aiming points on, on jerseys and shirts and on shields so that you can make teaching the, the fundamentals easier for coaches and for players to learn it. So it's a pretty cool deal. I'm doing my part to be proactive and trying to make the game a safer game. That's so a great idea. That's great. Love, man. Great, LeVar. Well, we appreciate Extreme Precision dot com and uh join us again sometime brother we got a roll but man, i appreciate coming you, up whenever you invite me just do it on a weekend though man so i have a couple pops <laughs> in and and you know i'm up at 11 30. <laughs> all right the great lavar arrington thanks buddy i'll talk to you uh, soon sorry guys Later, See you, LeVar. Right, and we'll be back right after these words <laughs>